Hello everyone, my name is Scott Hodgden and I'm a Senior Technical Marketing Engineer in the Enterprise Network Again Cloud Group in Cisco Systems. In the Cisco SD Access channel, we share with you features and technologies of the Cisco SD Access solution and show you how to enable them. Cisco SD Access is a crucial part of Cisco's Zero Trust solution, providing automated, dynamic, multi-tier segmentation for user, device, and application traffic. Cisco SD Access automates user policy so organizations can ensure the appropriate access control and application experience are set for any user or device to any application, user, or device across the network. This is accomplished with a single network fabric across LAN and WLAN, which creates a consistent user experience anywhere without compromising on security. Today I'm going to talk about the LISP Publisher Subscriber or LISP PubSub capability introduced in SD Access version 2.2.3. The first thing I usually ask myself when looking at something new is, why was this new capability introduced? As shown in this diagram, before LISP PubSub, a combination of LISP and BGP was used as a transport to propagate prefixes between the control plane and border nodes in a fabric site. With LISP PubSub, LISP becomes the transport protocol used to propagate prefixes between border nodes, as subscribers, and control plane nodes, as publishers. This simplifies the configuration since no new commands are required for basic PubSub communication. It's simply built into the code by default. Here you can see some of the considerations for enabling LISP PubSub. LISP PubSub requires iOS XE 17.6.1 or newer to be running on the borders and control planes, and DNA Center 2.2.3 or newer for orchestration. For new fabric sites, LISP PubSub should ideally be used unless the new fabric sites are connected to an existing SD Access Transit that is using LISP BGP. The Transit Control Plane nodes can support LISP BGP fabric sites or LISP PubSub based fabric sites but not both simultaneously. LISP PubSub is only for new or greenfield sites as migration of an existing site is not yet possible, but such a capability is being developed. Finally, LISP PubSub not only simplifies the communication between borders and control planes, but it also acts as the foundation for new capabilities that will make SD access more flexible from both resiliency and deployment perspectives. Features such as dynamic default borders and SD Access Extranet rely on LISP PubSub as a foundation. These will be covered in separate videos in the SD Access YouTube channel. Now let's have a look at how LISP PubSub is enabled. Now that we've had a look at the overview of LISP PubSub, let's have a look at how we enable this. And there are two places where PubSub is enabled. Uh, either in a site control plane or in a transit control plane when using SD Access Transit. And we're going to look at both here. So we're going to come here and we're going to look at provision and fabric site. And we've already got a fabric site set up in the sense that there's devices assigned to this SD02. And if we have a look at this really quickly, we're going to see that I have DC-TCP, which is transit control plane. I've got a border. I've got a fabric edge. I've got another switch hanging out here, but we're not really concerned about that. We're going to focus primarily on the border, where we're also going to run a control plane. And that's pretty common, I would say, in 95% plus of deployments. You'll find a control plane co-located with a border. And then in the case of SD Access Transit, you'll have a transit control plane. So we're first going to actually enable... Uh, list pub sub on the transit control plane and to do that we're going to go back to fabric sites and we're going to look at transits now I don't have any transits configured here so let's create a transit and we'll just call it pub sub for lack of a better name and you'll notice here I can now choose if I'm doing SD access transit if I want list BGP which is the uh, prior method or the new method with pub sub and in this case obviously we want to look at pub sub and since there's no other SD access and transit environment existing, uh, we can do this. So I'll say pub sub. And I need to find my transit control plane node site. And if you recall, this was SD-02. So there we go, I wanna use that. And now I can get a list of devices that are possible to run the 
transit control plane in that site and I want to use dc-tcp.demo. So I'll do that. I'll say save. I'll say apply. And it'll go pretty quickly. As you'll notice here, submitted, success. And if I go back to the site now, I can look here and I can see that I've got transit control plane. Notice it changed blue. There's a little TC here to indicate transit control plane. And if I come in and I do a quick command here, if I do a show Lisp service IPv4, I'm going to get a lot, but I'll just scroll up a little bit here. And you'll notice now that it says right here, publication subscription enabled, publishers not found. Well, the transit control plane itself is a publisher. So what it's saying is there's no other publishers talking to it, but the transit control plane itself is a publisher because all control planes in a pub sub environment are publishers. And so I have the publication subscription enabled, the pub sub enabled here. So I'm going to close this out. I'm going to go back to my site here. And now I'm going to enable the control plane and border function on this device here. And so first I'm going to do border. And I'm going to come here. I'm going to say enable layer three handoff because you have to do at least a layer two or layer three handoff when you enable a border. Now I have a transit site of my pub sub, so I'm going to choose that one. And I'm going to say add. There's nothing else I need to do there. I'm not doing an IP transit, so that's pretty straightforward. And now I'm going to do the control plane piece. Now when I do a site control plane, these are the options I'm given. And here again, you can see I have the prior list BGP. And you'll notice that this is on by default. Uh, because we still don't have a migration option. And so we want to make sure that customers that might have existing sites, especially if they're SD Access Transit, aren't trying to build PubSub and that BGP is the default. But in this case, I know that this is my only site. And so I'm safe doing PubSub in an SD Access Transit environment. So I'll say PubSub and I'll say Add. And I'll say Add again and then Deploy and then Apply. So if we wait about 15 seconds or so, the task will get submitted. And then you'll notice these little kind of working icons off to the right here. Uh, that information is being programmed on the various devices. And once that clears, we can go in and then have again a look at uh, what is shown on the new bordering control plane as far as uh, the transit control plane communication via PubSub and any other PubSub uh, information that might be there. So I'll shut this down. And we can come here and we can see if we run that same command, show Lisp uh, service IPv4, and enter again, it'll give me a lot of stuff. I'll just scroll up a little. But you'll notice here now I have two publication subscription enabled. I have two publishers. I have 192.168.1.1, and notice that is the local. Right, so what this is saying is that the local control plane process is acting as a publisher in this pub sub environment. And it's actually going to publish information to the local border process. So you can think of this as two separate functions within one physical device. But I also have 192.168.1.2, which is my transit control plane. So here you can see I've set up pub sub on both the transit control plane and on this site local bordering control plane. And I have these publisher subscriber uh, relationships set up between both the local control plane in the site and the transit control plane uh, in my SD access transit environment. So that's pretty much it. Uh, enabling PubSub is pretty straightforward. The thing again you have to remember is if I have an existing SD access transit environment that's already list BGP, then any new sites must also be list BGP because I can't have a mix of list PubSub and list BGP uh, on one transit control plane. If I have IP transit sites only, then those sites can be a mix of list BGP and list PubSub. Newer sites might be able to take advantage of some of the new functions, such as the dynamic default border capability that I previously mentioned we'd cover in another video uh, on this channel. So that's pretty much it. It's pretty easy to enable PubSub. And hopefully you'll see some of the added benefits as we uh, release the other videos showing these new capabilities like the border convergence and like SD access extranet. So I thank you very much for your time. Hopefully you got a lot out of this. Uh, don't forget to like us and uh, have a great day.